Hi guys, it's Beth. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am sharing with you some products that I received from Queen of Craft. They are a craft supply company and they asked me to try out some of their products and I was happy to do so because after checking on the website they have a lot of cute paper pads or packs. They have stickers, dies, stamps, and then a lot of other crafty items. And so I was super excited to get my hands on some of them and try them out. So I just wanted to show you what it is I got. And then I'm also going to do a project with you today. So the package came with this little thank you card for ordering and um, just where you can find them online, on social media, and then this cute little notebook. And then what I got, I got two packs of stickers. One, they're like little round stickers, and a lot of them have sentiments on them, and then some are just images, but they are Christmas. I kind of went with the Christmas theme because I had a project in mind after like seeing what all was on their website. There were a few things I knew that I would like to get together because of the project that I had thought of. So this is the other pack of stickers and this, look at this cute little match box type box and I could see this being upcycled into another fun project once I have used the stickers. And so again, these are Christmas, but they're just different shapes, different icons and images. And then to go with that, I also got this Christmas pad and it's 24 sheets two designs and 12 of each design and it's just like muted Christmas colors so it's kind of you know like these stickers are just kind of like a muted Christmas palette there's like a little uh, sequin or shimmery glittery pattern and then I love the mint green and kind of the muted red and then the neutrals so I kind of fell in love with this pad right off because I actually ordered this before Christmas and this is the first time I've really had to sit down and start playing with it. So this is, I love that pattern with the neutral background and the greenery and the treats. And then I love this one too, that mint green. So a lot of fun designs in the paper pack and I think they will coordinate fairly well with the stickers that I got. So that's what I'm going to be using today. But then a few other things that I had got to tr gotten to try was this little greenery sprig. I thought that would be great for one of my decor projects or like block projects that I make. I also got the scallop circle or scallop oval die. I've been thinking about getting one of these anyway and so this was perfect timing and then I got this super cute stamp set it's gnomes there's a little toadstool gnome house some gnomes and flowers and then there's a variety of sentiments that are on the stamp set so I think my next project that I'll be doing here sometime in the near future will involve the oval dies and the gnomes but today I'm going to focus on the Christmas pad and the Christmas stickers. And what I'm going to be making is a, kind of a simple little envelope album. And so I have this box of envelopes that I picked up at Goodwill a while back and there were like a ton of envelopes in there and I've barely made a dent in them. And they are pretty close to six inches square. I think they're just shy of it. So I thought it'd be perfect for a six by six paper pad album. So I will be putting together an envelope album with you and then decorating it up with the stickers and paper that I got from Queen of Craft as well as some cardstock from my stash. So I will link Queen of Craft's website down below as well as links to the products that I use. So definitely please go check them out. They did have a lot of cute stuff, a lot of great dye, um, designs as well so definitely check them out and let me get things kind of changed around here and I will get to work.
Okay, so to start, I like to take some of the inside pages or the envelopes that are going to be my inside pages and I just trim off a little slice off the end so it creates a pocket on the end. My envelopes are six by six inches exactly, but for any size envelope that you're going to use, you would put the album together pretty much the same way. So you take two envelopes, you fold the flap on one of the envelopes back, and so I made sure that my second envelope was one that I had trimmed off the end. And then you are you need to apply adhesive to the flap of the envelope. Now you could do it on either side of the flap. It just depends on how you want it to connect into your other envelope. And then I try to burnish it down really good just to make sure it's going to hold. And I do like to use wet glue for this just because it does give you a little bit of wiggle room. I If it's a thin envelope, however, I do use score tape. That also works as well. You just can't move it around at all. So here again, I'm burnishing it down really good and I'm also burnishing the fold of the envelope so that it will continue to kind of lay flat and lay in place as I'm continuing to add the envelopes. So my album is going to have five envelopes that creates 10 pages. And then here I'm adding my last envelope and it's just a repeat, like every page you do the same step until you get to the end. So on this one, I'm going to take that flap from the very first envelope and I'm going to fold it across and glue it to the back. However, I'm going to leave a little bit of room like at the spine there. I'm going to not pull it real tight. I'm going to leave a little bit of room at the spine there and that will allow me to open my, when I open my album, it will let the pages will lay flat. So that's just something to think about. So again, want to burnish it down really good to make sure that that's going to hold. And then I'm just trying to kind of clean up that spine a little bit. So, but now you can see that when I open it, the pages do lay flat. So now I'm choosing my papers that I want to use. And I pretty much picked one of each design since there were 12 designs. And then it's just a matter of trying to figure out what I want on each page. So I really love that first, that pattern there that's kind of a mint green and with the, the greenery and the red and white checked ribbons and the berries. I really love that one. I think that's one of my, that's my favorite pattern in this collection. And so I'm going to make that my cover, but I wanted to back it with some red cardstock. And that does two things adds a little more interest to the cover and it also just helps reinforce the cover a little bit because I'm not going to add any kind of chipboard binding. I just wanted to keep this a simple album for you all so that I could finish it in one video. I always like to add pockets on my albums. It's just fun. They're really easy to make and it creates a lot of extra space for additional pictures. So I'll go more into that later. But right now, I'm just laying out each page before I glue them in because I want to make sure I get like a good coordinating pattern layout for both pages and I want to make sure that I can spread out my pocket pages and just I don't know for me any type I'm doing it Anytime I'm doing any kind of album, I always like to plan the pages out, kind of lay them out before I start gluing them in because there have been a lot of times where I realize later on as I'm going back to glue them in, oh, I think this page might look better with this or this layout might look better, you know, up against this other layout and I can switch them around. But once they're in the album, they're in. So I always do kind of this pre-planning beforehand. And I am trying to use up some of the scraps as I go along as well. And then when I get to the end, I realize that I used all 12 of the papers I'd pulled out and still needed a back cover. So I just pulled out another one of those kind of geographic cube light pa pages. When I'm making my pockets, I trim my cardstock for a six by six album. I trim my cardstock down to six and a half by three and a quarter. And that allows me to score a quarter inch on both sides as well a quarter inch at the bottom that I can fold up to create the pocket. And that's what I'm doing here. And then just kind of burnishing those folds to make sure that they stay. So now that I kind of have all my elements on the inside of the album, I want to work on what I might include on the cover. 
And I really did struggle with this part. I love all of the icons and images on the stickers. However, they were all fairly small and I felt like I needed something larger for the cover, but I couldn't figure out, I couldn't come up with a really great grouping. And I also wanted some like larger words. So I decided to pull out that scalloped oval die set that I also got from Queen of Craft and then decided to, I could have pulled in other items or sticker, letter stickers or something from my stash, but I really wanted to try and stick with what I got from Queen of Craft. So I just went to that cover page of the paper pack and cut out the word Christmas. And then now I'm just trying to figure out like what kind of images that I would want to put around my the word Christmas on top of the oval and you'll see that I even back some with cardstock because I they might be hanging off the oval or I wanted to pop them up and yeah I just I played a lot with that so because this paper is a little bit thinner anytime I'm adhering the pattern paper down I use my score tape and then if I'm adhering the cardstock, I do use my art glitter glue. So I kind of float back and forth between the two adhesives. Here, I want to add something to cover my, my binding there, or the spine rather. And so I just took some of that kind of minty aqua cardstock that I had and trimmed it down so that it was the same height as my cover papers and then just glued it to the front and back around the binding and again I left some a little bit of room so that when it opens like it will allow the pages to lay flat like I didn't want that spine to be so tight that the pages couldn't open all the way so here I'm doing the same thing to the back cover that I did to the front, just layering the pattern paper onto the cardstock. So all of my main layers, like the cardstock in this instance, is five and seven eighths by five and seven eighths. So that leaves like an eighth inch border on each side. And I find that's easiest for me because whether I'm working with envelopes or paper bags, it's the pages even though it may be a six inch envelope they're not always exact like there's always a little bit of difference so leaving that border just kind of gives me a little bit of freedom as to getting it on the the envelope with more of a equal border around and not having to do a lot of trimming if it overhangs or some pages might not cover it so anyway that's that's just kind of how I roll with these. I always, just like my cards, I always like to leave a little bit of a border around. So anyway, now I'm back to putting my cover together and I did use some art glitter glue on that word Christmas and tried to smooth it out a little bit just so that the glue wouldn't leave any bumps underneath it. And then again, now I'm playing with trying to figure out how I, what I wanna use, how I wanna arrange it. And I even cut some of this out. <laughs> I just, for some reason on this day, I just really struggled. But I do finally come up with a plan that I think will work. And I decided to pull in some of the tan cardstock I had and cut another oval piece that I could back my red on, again, just for some more impact. So while I'm waiting for that oval piece to dry, I went ahead and pulled out my first pocket and I'm going to adhere the pattern paper to the pocket. So my pocket ends up being six inches by three inches. And so I would have trimmed up that pattern paper on top of the pocket to be two and seven eighths by five and seven eighths. Again, leaving that border just gives me a little bit of, of, of room to play with there. So finally decided on which stickers I wanted to use on my cover and I am finally ready to move to the inside. So pretty much every page is the same. I'm adding the score tape to the back of the pattern papers and again all the pattern papers are trimmed to five and seven eighths inch square and then once I get my score tape on and the backing removed I just burnish the pattern paper onto the page so that it's going to stick really well. And I usually try to include some interactive pages 
in my album. So whether that's this pocket page that will include tags that can be pulled in or out, or if it's like a lift the flap type thing, I do try to include at least a couple of interactive pages. So you'll see that throughout. And then you saw that when I put my pocket down, I did use art glitter glue on the pocket itself. A uh, couple reasons. One, it does give me just a few extra seconds of wiggle room on trying to get it into place. And then two, when the glue dries uh, with the wet glue, it will dry completely. However, when you are using score tape, like right here, it will always remain sticky. So if there was any part of the score tape that was hanging over the folds that I made on the back of my pocket, then it could still allow, it could cause things to stick within the pocket. So here I made kind of a lift the flat page. It's just like a little booklet. And I ended up making it so that it was four and a quarter inches wide and five and a quarter inches tall, I think. So that would have been 11 or 10 and a half inches by four and a quarter piece of cardstock that I folded in half. And then the pattern paper I did again, an eighth of an inch smaller than the rest of the cardstock. So on this one, I decided to create a photo mat on the page. I used a piece of scrap from that red pattern on top of the tan pattern paper and then kind of to help it tie in a little bit more or look a little bit more planned I added that that photo mat there and again I try to keep my photo mats because it is a six inch page like you could fit a six inch picker picture on here but it would take up like the whole height of the page. So I usually go with a four by, I like to make my photo mat so that they will fit a four by five inch picture. So whether or not I'm double matting or, you know, single matting, I do try and leave enough room that I can, that you could, all you have to do is trim off a little bit off the top or bottom of a picture and not have to do a whole lot of cutting. So I'm working on the next pocket page again. And this one is done the exact same way as the first, just with different papers. And I'm sticking my hand in there because I did adhere my adhesive on the, the inside flap of the envelope. So like where you would lick it to ad, you know, cause the envelope to seal. That's where I put my adhesive. And so it attached to the bottom side of the envelope it was sliding into. And so I wanted to make sure when I applied my patterned paper that I didn't seal off the pockets that I had created. And usually it works out the way I put my score tape that it's not an issue, but I do like to check just in case. Um, before I before I start layering other things onto the page so that I can have time to correct it. So on this particular page, I decide that I wanted to create a little band that goes across the top of the page, but I only adhered down the edges on either side so that, you know, you could slide a picture underneath it if you needed the room. And then I did add one of those circle stickers on a circle punch. So some of the pages I just use stickers directly on, and this is kind of what I'm doing now, is just kind of going through the album and figuring out how I can use the stickers to help decorate. And then I'm also creating the photo mats that go inside the pockets. And these are kind of varied sizes. I usually just go with the scraps that I have from cardstock that I've already used. So I do, again, try to keep it so that you can at least fit a four inch wide picture on there. And usually I try to, again, keep it so that it can be a four by five picture, but it doesn't always work out that way. And then sometimes with the pocket, you can't fit a, a taller mat. So I usually just kind of go with whatever size that I have already cut down or, you know, sizes that I have left. One other thing that I do try to think about when I'm laying out my pages is that on each two page spread, I try to leave some kind of white space that 
there could be some type of journaling, whether it is, you know, just writing the date or the name or the place. And I will do that through, like sometimes I may add an extra little tag or circle as part of a cluster that, you know, can be written on or like the strip going across the bottom of the right hand page, they could potentially write on either side of the little cookie panel that I have there or sometimes it'll just be some extra strips that are coming out from behind um, an embellishment of some sort. So for the left side there I decided to back that Santa on some cardstock and then fussy cut around him and that's just to give him a little bit of extra stability because I'm going to put him on the edge of that photo mat and I'm only going to adhere the left side down so that a photo could slide underneath it on the photo mat there. So as I'm playing with the stickers, I'm just trying to find ones that I can group together easily. And since they're all fairly small, I those smaller ones I do try and group several together. So here I go with the little drink and the candy cane in the middle and then the little gingerbread man and decide to back that on a cardstock circle. And then there's the scrap of the tan paper and I just decided to cut it so that I could, it would fit behind that circle and stick out on either end just to give that circle a little bit more added interest and a little bit more weight on that page. So I do like to, to try and use scraps as I go, whether it's the scraps of cardstock or scraps of other pattern paper. It's nice to kind of have it all still sitting in front of me on my desk so that I can pick them up and use them as needed. So here I'm using a couple of scraps of that tan because I trimmed down a piece of tan to make another little booklet and used the scraps that I had left over on the right hand side so that just to kind of add a little border on the side and I try to mix up the pages where I'm adding borders sometimes I may add a you know a border or cluster on the right side or the left side or the top of the bottom and I try to mix that up as I go through the album so that they're not all in the same spot on the pages that aren't like truly interactive so here I'm, while I'm waiting for the glue to dry on those, my what I added to the page on the right, I'm trying to trim down my pieces that are gonna go in the ends of the envelope pockets, the open ends that I trimmed. And so these end up being like five and a half inch square. And sometimes I round the corners, sometimes I don't. It all depends on what I have that I can add to the, the cardstock as decoration or embellishment. So here I'm kind of going through the stickers and trying to figure out like what I might use on each of the colors because I have the red, I have the mint green, and I have the tan. So and then the, I think there's one mint green and one brown. So trying to find some of the stickers or pattern paper scraps that I could use on those colored cardstocks. And then I'm you know, kind of pull in a scraps of pattern paper or scraps of cardstock as well to do some layers. I really like layering those circle stickers onto cardstock, either the scallop circles or the regular punch circles, just because it gives them some extra stability. And honestly, I love the stickers. They were super cute. The hardest part for me was just trying to get the backing off sometimes. And that was the case for all of the stickers actually, which is true anytime that you don't have an actual sticker sheet that is just a single sticker. But they all came off, once I found the edge, they all came off really easily. And they all seem to stick really well too. So the adhesive on the stickers is really good. So here on this one, I just use that bigger panel of pattern paper and that's all I do on that side. So sometimes, again, just like on the pages in the album, I try to move my clusters or my my strips, the bands that go across the page, I try to move them from one side to the other or sometimes in the center. But I don't generally do a whole lot of embellishing on these 
photo mats that go in the pockets, whether it's in my envelope albums or in my paper bag albums, just because they're being pulled in and out. So I don't want anything two dimensional. And then I want there to be room for photos of some sort, whether I'm, they're not going to be full size photos again, because these are only five and a half inches square, but you know, you can trim down a photo and add, still add them to the the pages or you can just stick extra photos into the ends of the albums in those pockets that's kind of the glory of the pockets too creates extra room for photos or additional ephemera so just trying to use up some of the scraps that I have and I think I used all but one little scrap and I think that's because I didn't see it <laughs> until I was like cleaning up I ran across another little strip scrap and I was like oh I'm sure I could have used that somewhere because I was trying to include at least one patterned paper piece on each of those, at least on one side of each of those little mats. So here is my finished album in a, just kind of a, a quick flip through of the pages and the tags or photo mats that are in all of the pockets. And I really loved the paper. I love the colors in the paper. I love the stickers and the images. So if you enjoyed this, project and are interested in any of the Queen of Craft projects, again, they will be linked in the description box below. Please let me know if you have any questions. I will, you know, be happy to answer any questions on the album itself or any of the, the pages or the projects that I had. So it's New Year's. Happy New Year's to everyone. I hope 2021 is better for all of us and that things get back to normal at some point this year. But Happy New Year. Thanks so much for your time. And I hope you're having a crafty day. Bye.